Hello, my name is Kevin Constant. I'm with Topeka Electric Motor in Topeka, Kansas. Today we are going to show you and demonstrate how Cool Blue Common Mode Chokes help with reducing high frequency current on the common mode leads as well as on the ground wire from the motor back to the VFD. There are several methods we are going to show today. One is with the frequency drive with and without the Cool Blue cores. The second is on a static phase converter, which represents three phase power, no frequency drive. Our little motor that we have here that we're going to use for testing has been heavily modified. As you can see here in the picture, we disassembled the motor, overboard the end bells, and inserted Delron bushings into them. Then they was remachined back to a bearing fit. We then soldered a wire to the outer race on both bearings so we can measure high frequency current that passes through the bearings as well as get voltage readings of what voltage is there at the bearing from the outer race to ground so we can actually measure. The wires on this motor actually come from the bearing this one goes to the ground so we can create a loop we can actually pull these apart to take voltage readings on the bearings both front and rear bearing are this way and by putting the Delron bushing in we are able to totally insulate or isolate the bearings from ground so we can get all kinds of readings end of end, end to end of shaft current grounded and non grounded we also have multiple grounding brushes on here so we can actually test shaft grounding systems to see how they respond with cool blue versus uh, no cool blue checking also with the static phase converter with the brush actually able to measure lots and lots of different scenarios we are simply using two Rogowski coils these coils are used to measure high frequency current. We have standard frequency drive here as well as our Fluke 190 204 meter. So, first thing I want to show you is years ago before the introduction of frequency drives most motors were just ran across line start. We didn't have bearing problems and failures because of frosting and fluting. If we did have frosting and fluting back then, not running on a frequency drive, it was because the motors were actually designed asymmetrical or there was an unbalanced voltage, etc., like so. So our static phase converter will actually demonstrate the power signal that the motor will actually see running across the line. So that will also show us how clean the signal is and that's why we didn't have bearing failures. So I'm going to go ahead and start this up. As you can see, both the red line which represents the ground wire and the blue Rogowski coil represents the common mode leads. As you can see on the screen, the lines are very pure, they're clean, there's no static, there's no high frequency current, nothing detriment to the bearings. We have both wires hooked up to the motor. We have no shaft grounding brushes because when you run on three phase power, you do not need a shaft grounding system of any type because there's no high frequency current. I am now going to shut the static phase converter off. I'm going to reconnect. This is the frequency drive. Now we are going to power our motor. We have no brush grounding systems hooked up. Both of our bearings are reading to ground just like a standard motor would be out in the field. I am now starting the, the motor up. It will now come up to speed. This is a frequency drive, driving an electric motor with no cool blue cores. 
as you can see from the screen there is a lot of current spikes high frequency current on both the common mode leads and on the ground wire I am now going to take and connect one shaft grounding brush you can see that there has been no change on the signal. I'm going to go ahead and hook up another shaft grounding brush and you can see that there's been no change in the signal. We have two shaft grounding brushes hooked up. We have no change on the signal. Shaft grounding systems do not get rid of any high frequency current issues on the common mode leads or on the ground wire. We will now shut the frequency drive down, hook up the frequency drive to the motor with the cool blue leads installed. I will now unhook both grounding brush systems and refire up the frequency drive. As you can see, the signals are completely, have been reduced. A lot of it has been eliminated on your high frequency current, on your ground wire, as well as on your common mode lead. One good thing that Cool Blue is able to test after an install, you can actually shunt the cores out with a wire, like you would a CT coil. And you can see how the signal comes back, the high frequency current comes back. It is not as intense as it would be with the drive running with no cores. Because even though we shunt out the cores, there's still some absorption being absorbed. I, I mean, so I'm now going to unshunt this and I'm going to hook up, shaft grounding brush, it's still no change. Shaft grounding systems do not affect high frequency current on your ground wire or on your common mode leads. We need to think about in summary what we are actually accomplishing here. By removing, reducing the amount of high frequency that is on a ground wire, this will help in the manufacturing plants, wherever this is at, to help with reducing EMI noise that is now going to get on the line system. By removing the high frequency that's on the ground wire, we help with metal detectors, transducers, sensors, ground faults, sometimes high current trips, and scenarios like that because a lot of these situations occur because the equipment cannot digest the high frequency current. Removing the high frequency current on the ground wire will also help with data communications. Your Modbus errors, it will help reduce those. So this is just to, uh, a video we did to help show you what Cool Blue can actually do for you with common mode leads and the ground wire of removing high frequency current. And the day's date is 9.30.16, and thank you much.